the best ability in this game. Why use spells? Why use swords when you can just overwhelming volume of fire is all that is required. It is truly amazing. Howdy y'all, I am definitely not a hedgehog and welcome to Pleb Review, the satirical gaming review series where we are now reviewing my gameplay footage live. This way I can provide active commentary and ramp up my production while also making things a little bit easier on my side. So yeah, you'll see less memes and less fancy editing. However, I still plan to keep this as engaging as I possibly can and just fall back on my glowing personality. So what we have here once again is Diablo 4 and you may have noticed my character from the previous episode still remains where she was. So what have I been doing this time? Well, as you can see here, I had a bit of a coming to Jesus moment where I realized the druid class wasn't going to work. And my problems that I had with this game, with the gameplay in particular, may have stemmed directly from just incorrectly making the wrong character choice. And so I, through some internet browsing, discovered that the rogue class is like one of the most underused classes, but is also somehow one of the best classes. And so I thought to myself, well, let me give it an honest try. And boy, did it change my perspective on the gameplay because something about this class really just vibe with me. And the amount of damage this class can put out is kind of nutty. And it really helps the gameplay flow when you can just vaporize things in an instant. So I had a self-reflection and decided that some change needed to happen that that the the druid label wasn't really how i felt on the inside <laughs> look i know i went from a female to a male character and i know that this is june but let's not draw those comparisons that's not happening here i did some class affirming changes not gender affirming changes <laughs> one other thing i changed is a uh, freaking obvious now in comparison was last time i had a crazy green screen set up right behind me and i had an overlay my screen recording on top of the green screen and it was really an impressive workaround to something that totally didn't even need to be a problem because screen duplication thing is just built into windows <laughs> so instead of having three monitors one two and then three i have one two and then one again and it's just so much easier than using a green screen so what is directly in front of me is what you guys can see right there so here we are here's a good example of why the rogue class is just freaking absurd i have an ability that makes me shoot out a whole bunch of arrows at once it's like a freaking machine gun okay i don't i don't know how it works this is a fantasy universe. We don't ask those kind of questions. All that matters is he can shoot out five, well, that's not five, five arrows over the course of like a single second. And one of the sub trees of this ability is whenever a enemy has a vulnerable status, which as you can see right here is the purple. Um, all that means is they're taking 20% more damage for a short amount of time. Well, that status can also have secondary abilities bounce off of it. And one of those for this is when they are vulnerable, you get a, you basically get a discount to your resource. You see this big purple orb right here? That's my character resource. Every time I'm casting my machine gun arrow ability, it's supposed to be draining that resource. However, since I can make the enemy vulnerable with my basic attack, every three hits makes applies the vulnerable status, I get a discount on that um, secondary ability and I actually gain resource back in addition to like utilizing it. So I think I gain about 70% or 60% of it while I'm also utilizing it, which means you can just have like this crazy onslaught and that boss there that gave me such a hard time in the previous episode with the Druid class, it just eradicated in seconds. I barely had to move, I barely had to heal. I, like, I don't even have that many abilities to my name and I just vaporized her very quickly and it very sad it was very satisfying honestly especially in retrospect so i'm doing some fooling around here let me just let me find some some real fun what were we doing here oh we're chasing lilith um 
We killed Narel's mother. Yes. We defeated Narel's mother. It was such a breeze because any, any person, any enemy I come across, I just shoot a burst of five arrows at them and their health bars just completely disappear. And because I can make them vulnerable at a moment's notice, I can... Um, oh, here we go. Here's my skill tree. Oh, it, yeah. So I can even double down here in a second. Hold on. So now I get a second uh, imbuement. M Bument. Wow, that's a hard word to say. So this gives me a uh, slight buff to my weapons, and this one does like extra shadow damage. I don't. What is a shadow damage? Is this? Are we playing Yu-Gi-Oh now? Well, this imbuement, imbuement, imbuement. Why is that so hard to say? So I can apply a buff to my weapon that makes enemies explode, and that explosion makes the neighboring enemies vulnerable. And while those enemies have that vulnerable state, my machine gun arrow ability gets a discount. And so if I just come to a big group of enemies, I can just lay down a whole bunch of slaughter on them in a matter of a, a, very, a very short time frame. The best ability in this game is why why use spells, why use swords, when you can just overwhelming volume of fire is all that is required. It is truly amazing. Here's the flesh monster boss. This guy didn't give me a, he wasn't very difficult with the druid, I will say, but man, was it even more trivial with the, uh, with the rogue. I keep wanting to call it a ranger. Oh, this class is inspired from a book series called The Ranger's Apprentice. So I'm a highly deadly bow using individual by the name of Holt. And anyone who's read Ranger's Apprentice will recognize that name immediately. I I'm currently on like book number four and so um, it inspired me to make a character on an actual theme from a another... I know this is exactly what I did with the druid, isn't it? I made a character theming it based off of another franchise. And so here, I'm getting so casual with how much damage I've done. Like, look at that. He's on his final phase. How many seconds has this fight been going on? Not even a minute. And I'm getting so casual, I'm not even worried about my health. I actually had to heal there because I was foolishly just not paying attention to what's going on. There's a boss. He's dead. Oh, 40 freaking seconds, I think, was when that fight lasted. This is kind of hilarious. Whenever you use your ability, he makes like a a spectral bow like kind of appear out of nowhere like ghost arms and a ghost bow just spawn out of nowhere and here i am using a crossbow that's supposed to be a higher damaging lower rate of fire uh format of weapon and he could still just shoot off that uh, like machine gun ability like like nothing um i'm guessing the ability happens no matter what type of weapon you're using which is hilarious i wonder if you don't even have a bow if you can still use the ability I currently have food going on right now. I have rice. I'm trying to I'm trying to think to myself, can I review five hours of footage in 40 minutes? We is we's gonna find out. <sighs> Nothing better for reviewing gameplay footage than some sweet tea and some gummy bears. Is what I would say if I hadn't freaking ate all my gummy bears last night. I was supposed to be doing work last night, and instead I was snacking and watching my friend live stream. Shout out to Merc Madness. Uh, do you ever do you ever like do something and then later regret the thing you did? When you think back upon yourself, you're like, man, I really freaking hate that guy. <laughs> that that that's me right now. I could be eating some gummy bears, but instead I have what I have. Oh, ooh, I have these short string potatoes. Ooh, I thought this was empty. I didn't even, I haven't even opened this at all. Heck yes. It's like Christmas all over again. Good Lord, 1300 calories. Jeez. 163% of your total daily saturated fat. Wow. I'd feel real bad about eating this in one sitting. I might eat, I might just eat the whole thing. I, I know I just said I have dinner in like 40 minutes, but I might just eat this whole thing before that. <laughs> What's going on in this footage? I forgot what we were doing even. Oh, oh, that's right. Um, so a, one of the, what's they called? Haradrin? His name was Donan. He sent us to go find his druid friends. Yes, I remember now. The um, Lilith uh, demon chick invaded his home. He's the guy that like opened up the flesh curtain and invited her into his like private sanctuary. Like, yeah, freaking moron. If an ominous doorway appears in front of you in the middle of the night, I hope you would understand that you should probably not open the door. Don't, Mr. Donan obviously is just 
very confident or very ignorant. And so now he had some, uh, what was his story again? Oh, so he had some, some druid friends. They were fi fighting against some demon and they couldn't actually kill him. So they just imprisoned him. And now Lilith wants to free him to get some kind of favor from him. She went to Donan in his study. He didn't help, but she found out that he had two buddies, a two druids. And so now we are in the forest dealing with the outcome of her interactions with one of the druids. And then immediately after this, we got to go find out what's up with the other one. Yeah, I'm running back. Look at all this walking. Do more cardio in this game than I've ever done in my entire life. Yeah, so here's one of the druid guys. When I first saw him, I thought he was just like really short. I took a closer look and realized, no, he is a... Uh, he's currently cut in half and somehow still going strong. <laughs> Uh, kudos to you, dude. You are uh, a man of great endurance, I imagine. But this red thing—that is not like—that is not like a robe or a tarp. That is a trail of blood, because man is straight up in half, and he acts us to to finish to finish the job that Lilla started. Basically, yeah. Here we go. Being stabbed in the heart is deadly to this druid guy, but being cut in half, yeah, he was fine with that. Yeah, being being cut in half is no big deal. I mean, he, can, he can just hang out all day, you know, hunt, hunt hours upon hours of gameplay with with the screwing off, and he, he would just sat there no problems. But you know, getting stabbed in the heart, that's that's a different story. It's, it's relatable. How much? How far are we in? We're an hour and 20 minutes in. We're making good time. I wonder if I can actually finish this review before <laughs> before dinner. We will see. Yeah, especially if I fast forward all of this walking. I have no idea at what point does this game give you a mount, but whenever it is, it is not soon enough. <laughs> I'm going on full cross country expeditions on foot. I feel like a, a, a missionary. Oh, so I think this is specifically where we left off with the, as the druid, or at least where I stopped playing. I came up to this village to to find the other druid, and I was like, ah, screw it. I'm not going to play this game anymore. But I have to. I have to finish this review. So I just redid the entire segment just to play as a better class. Mr. Donan, the uh, guy that opened up the door to let in Mrs. Demon Lady into his private domain like a freaking genius, his son was sent here for some reason. And, uh, he wants to help us find the other druid friend. Druid number one. Mr. Nailed to a tree and cut in half. He is, um, he, he's done so. We, we kind of saw to that. But maybe Druid number two. Astaroth, that's the name of the guy we're, we're trying to deal with. Or the name of the guy Lilith wants uh, to free. So he, this son, is familiar with this uh, area or with this Druid in some capacity. And so he's offering to help us. So we don't get to hang out with Mr. Donan himself, but we do get to play out with Donan Jr. The shoestring potatoes are delicious, but they're actually kind of hard to eat because they're so small. I normally use like a spoon, but I don't have one right now. These guys have like the coolest armor so far I've seen. Like they're, they're just supposed to be in this game. I mean, they're supposed to be just normal like security guards basically are just normal. I, I don't know, knights or soldiers. I'm not sure what their, what their role is in society, but man, do I ever love their armor. They got enormous shoulder pads. I used to be a big fan of like from a distance. I was a big kind of big and casual fan of world of Warcraft. Like I couldn't be a proper fan cause I couldn't play the game, but I could look at things like on the internet and stuff, but uh, actually playing the game. That was, that was too much uh, with my internet back in the day, our dial up and the, the early world of Warcraft days, it was real big on shoulder pads and so I just have a deep appreciation for enormous shouldered armor, even though it's the most impractical thing in the world, apparently. I have yet to run across a single enemy to give me pause. You click once, right click, left click, any enemy in front of you just drops like a sack of potatoes. So uh, my biggest problem with Diablo 4, it seems, was not that the day-to-day -day gameplay was overly repetitive. I mean, don't don't get me wrong, it's highly repetitive. <laughs> but it felt grossly repetitive with that god-awful druid class. So Mr. Mr. Donan Jr. here knows he knows some type of druid stuff, and we're trying to get to something. I for, uh, I don't know if it's the actual female druid we're looking for or like her house. Yeah, look at that. Enemy spawns in, left click, right click, done. Regular hits or critical hits, doesn't matter. Absolutely meaningless. 
Let's see, look, I'm level 25. I've been playing this entire secondary or second class playthrough on world tier one. And um, my, my, my good friend, uh, Black Licorice, in the comic section of my previous upload, told me I need to give the world tier more credit. And he is probably right. From what I've seen, uh, hold on, I gotta scratch something. Yeah, very satisfying. From what I've seen of the later gameplay footage, um, the world tier thing actually does come into effect um, a little bit more purposely. It feels kind of ridiculous at the lower, the beginning of the game, but yeah, at the very, the very end stages, the very, the very late game, it does seem to serve a, a pretty uh, substantial purpose. So you know, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it credit when I get to that point. If I make it to that point, <laughs> I may find something else to play before I even get to that. How much time do I screw around in menus? The answer is too much. Ah, here, here we have a prime example of the rogue's power. See, I come across a big group of, what are these, uh, zombies, basically. I put on my, my weapon buff that makes enemies explode. Those exploding enemies, uh, make their neighbors have the vulnerable status, and then my freaking arrow machine gun ability basically uses, like, no resource. Well, I'll say little to no resource. It's, like, nine instead of 14 or something. And even here, I'm just I'm just wandering into dudes, not even concerned, because I know any anyone that comes up on me, yeah, they hit real hard. I'm a damaging class, so I don't have that much health or armor to speak of whatsoever. But I just instantly just zap enemies out of existence, so it's not even a problem. Oh no, oh no, I hit the wrong button. Don't don't look at my editing format. This is not how I normal edit. This is just a temporary solution. Don't look. Don't look at this. Don't, okay, okay, I fixed it. Pretend, pretend you didn't see that. There, there is no man under the curtain. You did not see my editing setup. That is not what it normally looks like. I promise. Uh, what what button am I looking for? Oh, there it is. Ah, here, finally, we're finally done. So this is like the druid's favorite hangout spot, I'm guessing. And this altar that's supposed to be a gift to the spirits or some capacity is just filled with gore and corpses and there's just disgustingness all over and i am guessing at this point in my playthrough that something must not be right a altar to mother nature should not have mountains of flesh strewn upon it you know just just a guess just a hunch also, these stones around the altar have the voices of tormented spirits speaking to us, which probably is not a good thing. Oh, they weren't even stones. They were trees in hiding. Look, that guy just did a 40% of my health with one swipe, but it doesn't matter because I killed him like of the very next second. Man, when I speed up the footage to twice the speed, it straight up sounds like a machine gun going off. <laughs> That's probably what I'm gonna have like in the title of this video or like the thumbnail is just this my character like holding some kind of like automatic rifle because this that's just basically my gameplay experience in a nutshell. Not that I'm complaining or anything. It may seem repetitive, but well, that's just Diablo, but it's still satisfying. You can be the repetitiveness can can still be pretty satisfying when it works as well as this. But will it work like this for the entire duration of my future history of playing this game? That's yet to be determined. Look at this tomb, just covered in blood and guts. Or this, uh, what is this, uh, sarcophagus? Yeah, just covered in, like, growing flesh fungus thing. Uh, it's really gross and probably not a good sign. It looks like the kind of uh, catacomb thing that might be buried with fancy equipment that I may want to open up if this was some kind of other game. Like if I was playing the Elder Scrolls, if I was playing Skyrim or Oblivion, uh, I would absolutely be cracking open that sarcophagus to steal whatever the dead guy was buried with because he doesn't need it anymore, realistically. Like I need it more than he does. Wireless headphones of mine keep cutting out on the Bluetooth. It's very annoying. I, I need to hurry up and get sponsored by Raycon or something because these these are irritating me. Like you can you can probably hear all the volume just fine. Yeah, I can see through the audio software. It's coming through just fine. But these keep going muted. It's very annoying. I might as well just like put them in their box or reset them in some capacity. Why are you paused? Put these back in. See if they want to cooperate. If there's a Raycon representative on the other side of that uh, webcam, there, hit me up. You can you can sponsor me for a whole year. I know my videos don't get that many views, but I will gladly represent some some Raycon, Raycon earbuds just to, just because I like free stuff. Uh, what's happening now? Oh, so we are we're pursuing the female druid friend of Mr. Donut, and we have stumbled across a hermit of some sort living with his daughter. This little girl is amazing. I don't know how old she's supposed to be. You ask her like how she's doing, and she's like she's like I got I got food, 
and I got weapons. That is enough for me. And this girl's like nine years old. What a boss. Playing as a ranged, a ranged combat primarily has its benefit of, you know, keeping away from your enemy as you actually remove them from existence. It is becomes quite annoying when you engage in other enemies that also have ranged attacks. Like, oh, dang it. They're using my own strategy against me. You're going to stand over there and attack me. That's what I've been doing this whole time. How freaking dare you? And so these, the most annoying enemy I've faced so far is these ghost dudes because they have bows as well. <laughs> I can't just be a safe distance away from my, my target because the target will absolutely just shoot at me. Look at that, I almost freaking died. These are just normal dudes. This isn't some boss fight. I'm on the way to the boss. And these guys are absolutely wrecking me by doing the one tactic I was not prepared to deal with, which is them standing over there while they shoot me. While we are dealing with these wretched souls, these skeletons, these spirits and stuff, there's this voice in the background of the druid lady who we're, who I think we are trying to rescue, or we're just trying to find her and kind of see what's up. We're getting attacked by spirits, and the druid chick is having a conversation, a one-sided conversation with us. Like there's, there's no, there's no signs of Lilith. It's kind of suspicious. Something about this game just really makes me want to hang out in menus the entire time. I'm not, I don't know what it's about. Oh, this, this part's pretty cool. So we finally found her. This is the druid chick we've been chasing this whole time. The music we've been hearing in the background, like from the video game, apparently has just been her this entire time. She's just been on this mountain with her harp thing, uh, her own little performance for the entire like county to, to hear against their will. And so we go to her and like, hey, the, do you know lady that the dead are rising and killing your neighbors and she's like yes i am aware and then we're like oh dang are you in on this and she's like yes <laughs> there's no there's very little arguing this there's, there's some genuine honesty going on here that i can't help but appreciate we accuse her you're working with the enemy and she's like yeah her philosophy seems a little flawed she wants to create a traumatizing situation for the people like all the people the ones that survive they will be physically and mentally ready to deal with the problem that is coming because uh i guess lilith's whole thing is she was like a demon from hell but they're not on speaking terms anymore her and her uh, demon buddies and hell is coming back and lilith in her own screwed way is trying to prepare for that and she has convinced our druid lady friend here that she must prepare the people for the invasion of hell by starting her own invasion of corpses so that the corpses and the zombies and the spirits and stuff will just kill everybody who's not strong enough and the strong people that remain will be ready for when hell invades and it's just like if there's a big war coming war has more elements to it than like warriors <laughs> I, I know that's like shocking to some people. You need food, you need supplies, you need blacksmiths. The, these warriors need like families to keep them motivated to remember what they're fighting for. If you kill off all of the bakers and all of the smiths and like all of the families and maybe like a whole bunch of warriors will be thousand warrior like really strong warriors will remain maybe possibly but like they will not be ready to handle an invasion there's a lot more that goes into it than just being a good fighter and having good fighters around you <laughs> like so this hermit lady that lives in the forest i don't feel like she's getting a grasp on the bigger picture here causing a big zombie uprising before a literal invasion from hell is not as beneficiary as she has convinced herself my people have forgotten forgotten what it took to defeat Astaroth they must learn again like okay the the the, the, the demon thing that you guys dealt with was a huge problem right but that was one guy causing a ruckus according to Lilith who is the daughter of one of the prime evils or lesser is it lesser or prime evils I forgot what I forgot what it's, it's prime evils yeah she's the daughter there's three big demons she's the daughter of one of them um, according to her, which seems like a pretty solid source for information on this kind of subject, literal hell was, we'll be here momentarily. <laughs> the Astaroth was a, he was a big guy. He was a big bad guy. And I'm sure you, Donan, and the other druid, I'm forgetting the name of, had a real tough time dealing with him. But this is something 
completely different and going on your own little zombie apocalypse spirit rampage, uh, haunted spirit rampage and nonsense is probably not going to help in the long run. I'm glad, I'm, I am I felt no remorse about taking out this uh, druid chick because the first guy helped Lilith what was his reasoning? The first guy that was nailed to a tree, he helped Lilith because she promised that she would help him. And it turns out that she wasn't as helpful as he thought. And then he, uh, she cut him in half. And he was really remorseful, and he was like apologizing to us, and he regretted his decision. Dealing with him was pretty sad, you know, we we had to finish him off because he was forever going to be nailed to that tree, I guess. But this chick, this druid chick we just got done with, I was like super satisfied to just wipe her off the face of the earth, because she is just a, oh, she's not nice. I got, I got no remorse for wiping her out. Friggin' causing a zombie apocalypse, almost getting this nine-year-old girl killed by some spirits just because you thought the people weren't strong enough. Like, killing people is not a good way of preparing the people to be killed. As mo moral of the story, basically. <clears throat> Ooh. Ah. So we, we, we kill Druid Lady, and now we're back talking to uh, Yornin, or Donan Jr. And he says something, Heroism and sacrifice are often intertwined in the course of fate. Killing that druid chick wasn't a sacrifice. She was a freaking... She just had it coming. Oh my god. Like, Lilith. Lilith is the bad guy, okay? Like, she, we have to stop her, right? But Because we don't agree with Lilith. I don't agree with Lilith. But I, I can at least understand where she's coming from. But that druid chick. No, she was just an idiot. There was no hero, heroic sacrifice. She was just dumb and had it coming. No, don't, don't, don't use that. Don't use that motivating quote to describe that druid chick I, I got no i got no hard feelings about wiping her out like at least lilith's intentions make sense and her plan or her intentions are clear and her plan so far makes some kind of sense that druid chick was just a whole bunch of nonsense she had it coming so we're making our way back to donan's castle and where we once saw bustling people and a whole bunch of guards we now find demons or goat men i think these are goat men yeah blood clan goat man okay and a whole bunch of corpses like oh this is not how we left it you know you know that saying leave a place like better than you found it well, this place is much worse since we left it <laughs> don't know if it's our fault it's it's not our fault but uh very unfortunate look i'm i'm level not even level 30 yet and i'm decked out in all this yellow quality gear which i'm guessing in this game is like second best or maybe third best this game does not pull any punches with providing you loot and i certainly appreciate that and things are starting to slow down a bit i'm not killing these enemies as fast as i used to but still way faster than that freaking druid class i'm doing way more damage than she could ever possibly imagine but i am i am running out of resource this purple stuff I am running out of it during fights more regularly, and I have to pace myself. If I remember correctly from this playthrough, I actually struggle at one point. We, we will see that momentarily. Stay tuned. There is a big struggle coming up that's very entertaining. I'm, I'm excited to rewatch that. Oh, yeah. So here is me reviewing my uh, my abilities to just kind of give you... Let me give you a brief rundown of like how just how absurd I am. Like The rogue class is not just strong, okay? It is... It's absurd. So I have my basic ability, just fire arrows like normal. Every third shot makes the enemy vulnerable, which just means that's like a debuff uh, that makes them take 20% more damage, you know, which is fine. But then you have this ability that shoots five arrows at once and one of its upgrades, here it is. So gain 15 energy per cast of rapid fire when it's as damaging and vulnerable enemy. And if I go back just a bit, I think that little purple energy orb down there is a hundred. And to cast it, let me, let me see here. It costs 24 to cast regularly, which means I get like five uses of it or four uses of it normally. However, I gain 15 back if the enemy is vulnerable. So it goes from costing 24 energy to use to costing, what is that, 24 minus five? Uh, nine? Yeah, nine. Like, what kind of discount is that? Yeah, that, that's like 70, I get like 70% of the cost off for this ability, which is insane. So as long as I'm shooting at enemies that are vulnerable, which is not easy 
or excuse me, is not difficult to make. Like applying the vulnerable status is not that difficult with this class setup, at least. Um, I can absolutely just shred dudes. Ah, oh, here we go. My third like useful ability, the Caltrop trap thing, is it exists, but it's not that useful. So this makes me invisible and immune to enemy targeting. And when I use an ability that breaks concealment, makes make, makes me go from stealthy to like back to normal. The that ability makes the enemy vulnerable for six whole seconds so if i have my normal ability that applies vulnerable for two seconds on the third attack if i use that third attack to break the concealment of this ability that means i get eight whole seconds of vulnerable eight seconds of my machine gun uh, arrow ability rapid fire eight seconds of it being discounted like 70 percent of the resource it's supposed to cost which it, it takes my damage from just high crazy high damage to just absurd levels of dps and i can absolutely melt anything if i do the right setup of course i have to actually pay attention to what i'm doing but if i do then i can absolutely just eviscerate any enemy and here here's i'm making a crucial mistake here if you're playing a rogue class do not do what i'm doing i have taken off my ranged abilities and I am making a close range class because I kind of want to mix things up a bit and I do this for all of 20 minutes I think <laughs> and then immediately go right back to my rapid fire ability because this uh, if I if I remember correctly this was not the best choice because this kind of sucks it's very flashy it's kind of fun but the damage is just not there compared to my uh, my machine gun arrow build maybe there's some utility to it especially with uh, the abundance of, like poison you can actually cause on enemies there's probably some utility or synergy with other things that I just don't know about or I'm not thinking about but the raw damage not there so it doesn't Ooh, excuse me. Doesn't vibe. Doesn't sink. Doesn't uh, stroke my goat, if you know what I mean. Man, I, I go this whole dungeon with this close range ability. Ah, we found him, Mr. Donan. So this is the this guy's son was the, the gentleman we were just hanging out to go deal with the druid. So now we come back to his castle, and all of his dudes are done. There is like nobody left alive except for him which is kind of suspicious huh lilith and that beast yeah so lilith has a friend now um and they ravaged this entire populace of guards but left donan alive now why would lilith if she really didn't like this guy why would she leave him alive maybe there's some ulterior motive so now he is telling me that the ast uh, what's his name astroff the demon that lilith is after he's buried underneath the castle like they couldn't kill him they trapped him in a magical stone and then hid the stone underneath this freaking uh castle building and what donan has been doing ever since vanquishing this demon has just been keeping an eye on this uh, castle of his for however many like 20 years or however it's been and apparently remember an uh, uh Anarius, mr angel guy from the previous episode that was kind of a d-bag he actually assisted with some type of ward or spell to keep the demon astroth under wraps and i was surprised to hear this like from what i could tell mr Anarius, the big old angel dude was uh, not really interested in helping us humans he kind of actually hates us um but dealing with the demon he saw as uh something that he he would intervene somewhat you know gr gracious be unto him mr anarius bless this castle I'm like wow dude actually does stuff from time to time good on him i guess he's not being super helpful with our current problem he was willing to help donan out which is cool yeah but us who are, who are actively campaigning against mr anarius's ex ex demon wife yeah he's just like screw off not gonna worry about it man needs to get his priorities straight actually calling him a man is probably not doing us enough justice so this is unfortunate. Mr. Donan is not sure where his son has run off to. And here we're running through some catacombs of some kind. And we come across his son's bodyguard's corpse. And his son's weapon that I guess is special to him. So that's not a good sign. Let's see where this leads. 
Ah, so this big pile of rubble is where that soul stone of the demon is supposed to be, and here we have a, a cutscene starter about to show us something. I wonder if the destroyed soul stone deal and this Lilith blood mark have anything to do with each other. We're about to find out in this cutscene. Oh, look at that. That's real cool. I love glowy things that have movement in them. It's one of my favorite uh, designs in video games is if it if it glows, you know, like a lightsaber, cool, whatever. You know, we got we got neon LED things like that in real life. But if it glows and has moving wavy elements, just a whole nother level. If I could get some type of armor that did that, uh, that would do that. I absolutely would. Oh, here's Lilith again. I feel like we haven't seen her in a minute. So she's talking. Uh, she's talking to the demon guy in the crystal because apparently it just acts like a cell phone, I guess. And she's saying if he helps her with something, we're not sure yet. She will release him from his prison. And she now has Donan's son. He looks super young in this cutscene. I never. I didn't actually appreciate this at the time. <sighs> So that looks pretty painful, but I'm guessing the way you unlock a soul stone is by using the soul of a recently alive person. So, oh, let me go back. So there was something really cool that I just, I, I, I missed. So in this cutscene, there's some great symbolism here. There's some foreshadowing. See that in the background? I thought that was Astro. No, that's just, that's like some dog we get to play with in a little bit. He, he's not even uh, that big of a deal. But here we are, look. So she's she's looking at the son of Donan and approaching him with this intimidating soul stone. And look, look at this. You see this shadow? That is not Lilith's shadow. And that is not Yorin's shadow. That is the shadow of Astaroth. Like, talk about literal foreshadowing. That is the shadow of the demon that poor Yorin here is about to get turned into. That is amazing. I'm just now realizing. See, look, see, look. That's like a normal human shadow. And if we go back, demon shadow. It goes from demon shadow, Astaroth, to normal human shadow. That is amazing. Some developer was really having a good time when they were making this cutscene. So now we um, we see this cutscene and we tell Donan that his son has been stabbed with a soul stone, and apparently he knows what this means. Shaky breathing. Yeah, he's not he's not having a good time, Mr. Donan. Very unfortunate. There is still time. You have to trust me. There seems to be a lot of denial in the Diablo universe, like Nayrell. When her mom died and she found uh, the first necromancy spell book that she stumbled across, she was like, we can revive my mother and everything will be fine. And then we talk to Donan and tell him that his son has been stabbed with a soul stone containing a really bad demon dude. And Donan's like, there's still time. Everything will be fine. You have to trust me. And it's just like, dude, I know this is traumatizing information, but he didn't see the cutscene. He didn't see the vision. He didn't see that his son was stabbed in the head. I don't know if it's just blatant optimism, blind optimism, or if this guy is already in some serious denial. And we are back. Unbeknownst to the viewer, I have been gone for three hours. <laughs> I did this in the last video, except that was a, a whole nother day had passed. This time it's just a couple hours. But on the question of can I review five and a half hours of footage in 40 minutes, the answer is nope. <laughs> a resounding no. Oh, my headphones aren't working. Oh, I forgot to turn on Bluetooth. Oh, no, this is embarrassing. There we go. My headset is, or my earphones are working, and I actually widescreened it like I'm supposed to. Now, where, what were we doing? Oh, oh. So, Donan here, looking for his son. Last time we saw him, he was getting stabbed in the head by uh, this chick. Very cool, uh, very cool scene transition right there. Amazing. So, um, you remember that boy with the shadow we just saw a little while ago? Um, he's had a bit of a transformation. Until his tears became fire. Wept until his tears became fire. That is a raw freaking line if I've ever heard one. Goodness. Do as you please, Astaroth. I have what I can. She looks like she's been crying. Your mascara is leaking, girl. Go to the bathroom and fix yourself, queen. So, I don't really know who he is. And I'm not sure what's up with the dog. Why does he need the dog? Was it a gift? Like, a whole druid... Dude had to die so he could get this dog. Like the guy that was cut in half, his like blood was infecting the forest with like some magic curse. 
and the result was this dog as it's Cerberus. Um, but as you will soon see, I am struggling with this fight. Look at that. I'm, I'm about to freaking die already. Because of genius that I am, wanting to mix things up a bit, I switched to a close melee style of build. Almost my very next interaction was getting into a freaking boss fight. A mainline boss fight. Getting a run for my money, that, that's for sure. Like, I'm beating him, but he's also... Uh, well, okay, I'm, I'm fighting him pretty good, but he's also doing a number on me. And this is really freaking cool uh, dynamic for this fight in general. Is every time there's a phase... Like, there's usually... I think there's like five phases I've seen. Like, Max, this guy only has, what, one, two... Has three. Every time he changes phases... Something about the boss fight uh, changes, obviously. There's some new ability or something like that. However, in addition to that, he, the physical location changes. Like here, um, uh, after I weaken him again, I think he's going to relocate. And you go to a different zone. Yeah, it's happening right here. So the boss, like, runs away or relocates. And um, I just think it's really cool that you have to chase after him. I'm not sure what he's doing besides setting all of these poor people on fire. It's really neat the kind of changing that. Wow, these people are like on mega fire. That like in the world of Diablo, do they not teach stop, drop, and roll? Oh, and he starts summoning wolf companions. See, like remember that, remember that boss fight against that chick guarding the necromancy book that where she just ran in circles the entire time and I was super annoyed by it. She had damaging things in the arena, but other than that, like she wasn't much of a threat and her damaging nonsense was easy to avoid and it, it was it was annoying as a druid. It went quickly as a as a ranged rogue. But here, ranged or close combat, I don't think it would have mattered. Because there are a absorbent amount of damaging elements, and he is occasionally summoning in little minions to attack you separately. And with the scenery change for the different zones, for the different phases, like this boss fight so far has been one of the strongest for me personally. I still got a ways to go in the game, but mechanically and thematically, this so far this has got to be one of my more favorite boss fights. Especially now, look that dog, that dog, that demon dog not just dead he's in like tattered pieces so he removes the soul stone i guess the demon spirit gets put back into the stone when he does this i'm not exactly sure what the dynamic is the sun was under that nonsense this entire time and uh poor boy didn't make it so the reason i'm guessing that lilith attacked his domain his uh castle was to obviously get the soul stone and free the demon but also she purposely wanted to kidnap his son specifically just so she could i don't know traumatize donan like i don't know exactly specifically what her beef is with donan but uh yeah so mr mr guardian of the demon he failed in his responsibilities to guard the demon trapped in the stone and he failed in his responsibilities as a father to you know take care of his son so mr donan right there he is going through some things right now and like as a character like we we pursued the enemy we defeated the, the demon the the minor demon a whole town was just destroyed and donan lost his son and lilith still got away so it really feels like as much work as we're putting in it's it just what isn't quite enough and like it took this long this many hours into the game for the story to really start having an impact as a player Having this dynamic of like, we are trying our best and it just is not good enough, at least so far. And it's something that not enough games are willing to do. Like uh, this game is willing to make me as a player not feel good enough. And um, from a story perspective, it, it really, it's very humbling. And uh, many games are too afraid to do that. And so this, 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 is a, this is a good direction so far we're going in. And as you can see here, I am promptly switching right back to that ranger like machine gun thing I had going on with my bow and arrow because the sword and dagger nonsense was not doing it for me so after that boss fight um especially after that boss fight I am going right back to my old ways <laughs>
I was also inspired by the fact that, that Astaroth and his uh, five-headed dog gifted me a new crossbow, which was very nice. So Mr. Lorath here is uh, giving some A-plus uh, narration. And I had actually almost forgotten about this dude. He is the, what are they called? The Haradrin, they're the uh, protectors of the uh, of sanctuary of the world from both demons and angels. Well, we met up with him very early in the game, then he effed off and his mission doesn't even start until act three. This is finishing act two. So we're about to go reintroduce ourselves to him. He said he, he said it like better than I freaking could. Everything has happened exactly as Lilith wanted. We just danced to her music. Yeah, it really feels like uh, so far in Diablo 4, we, we have gone through several dungeons, several boss fights, several cutscenes, and it, we, as the heroes, are not winning at all. We are getting our butts handed to us. We needed to stop chasing her phantoms. And can you guess what we do in Act 3? We go about chasing phantoms again. At least we get to kill the phantom this time. Well, actually, I don't remember how it goes. We're about to find out once I review this freaking footage. Back on my bow shenanigans. No more, no more stabbies. No more daggers. We we shooting, we shooting machine, min, medieval machine guns here. I feel like many enemies I am coming across are taking significantly longer to take out. And from what I've read and some things I've seen on the interwebs, that is going to be a somewhat common theme with this game. It's about to get a lot more difficult to do basic things because the scaling is kind of nutty. But um, luckily, for the time being, it hasn't affected me too much. I'm just starting to feel the early effects of that. So as we are progressing, it really feels like we are traveling all across the freaking world. Like, the world is ludicrously large, especially for a game that hasn't given me a mount yet. Like, this walking simulator is nuts. There are horses in the game. I see them in the shop. Saw them in the pre-order. A bonus thing, but the game doesn't want to give me one. Over, what, 15 hours? 12 or 15 hours, and the game refuses to let me traverse the world any faster than a brisk jog with the occasional combat roll. All this, all this heroing I'm doing, all the, like this gold, I have like 100,000 pieces of gold. Uh, and the game's just like, nope, no horses, no transportation. You can fast travel. Yeah, fast travel all you want. But getting to a new location where you haven't discovered the teleportation runes? No, 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 no. You have to earn that. By earning that, we mean walk. You gonna freaking walk for it. I put more steps in this friggin' game than I've ever done in my entire life, and it's only been like 12 hours. The first thing I go into any town is to visit all the market people. Ah, oh, look, here we are. Here we go. Friggin' look at this. See this? Shop, mission, access, limited to mission completion. Can I start that mission, please? Who, who do I go to? Who, who, who needs talking to? Can I bribe somebody? Can I, can I, can I start this mission anytime soon? Because I would love the horse. I bet the horse is going to be slow as heck anyways. Like, it's not even going to make that much of a difference. Man, that sounds like something they would do. Oh, so, Mr. Haradrin, Mr. Protector of Humans and the World, um, he is doing the real, real, real boss, boss energy right here of literally sleeping in a pile of mud he drinks like an ox dude is <laughs> dude is out like a light it really it really feels like a just like a huge huge inspiration for me because um i would love to just be passed out drunk right now uh instead i'm making youtube content or at least i am making a video that will be put on youtube whether or not it is content that is up to you so please if you are watching this far in the video uh, like and comment the video might have, however long this is if you're watching this far you might as well right you've already committed so the the great the great hero the great man that is protecting the world or in the organization that's supposed to protect the world he came here he got some little information and then just gave up and <laughs> got super drunk and passed out in a goat's pen and we have been doing a lot mr lorath we hands <laughs> me that bottle he has to give you his, his, his alcoholic beverage is the first thing he does when he wakes up i was attacked by vast quantities of alcohol i need to i need to save that line save that use it later so we we've we've killed several demons been met lilith face uh, face to face at least like twice now i think and uh, mr lorath here has just gotten himself drunk after finding out like one piece of information 
that the human that is assisting Lilith and her nonsense is one of his people. And that information was so shocking that instead of being motivated to immediately respond to this information and do something about it, he decided to get drunk and share his bed with uh, a goat. Like I said, very relatable. The, the game gives you two different missions simultaneously. See, you're, you're given a letter basically saying that we, we know where his uh, the traitorous co-worker went, but we also have not heard from a local monastery that Loraf was sending letters to. So he was doing more than drinking. He, he sent off one or two letters to a local monastery. Is a monastery is like a church, I'm guessing? I'm not sure what, what the significance of a monastery is in Diablo, other than I, it acts like a library from what I can tell. And there's monks there. He's, he's been sending and letters there he's not getting responses and so he asks us to go investigate now the thing that i find interesting is it very clearly seems like you were supposed to go to the monastery first and then go meet up with lorath to go investigate his traitorous uh, co-worker but you get you provided both missions simultaneously which makes me think you could do meeting up with lorath first and then go to the monastery which seems super backwards especially once you understand what uh, especially once you discover what's going on here okay so he's not like a co-worker that's that's, that's not entirely accurate the traitor that is helping the demon lady is Lorath's direct apprentice, which is, from an emotional standbeat, I can understand how finding out the guy you were mentoring for however many years or, or decades even flipped the script and is now working for the enemy. That could be pretty traumatizing, so maybe we'll cut Lorath some slack for, for sharing his bed with some goats. Now, here, my god, the dungeons in this game. This has got to be the biggest freaking church in all of fantasy history. There are so many rooms and so many levels. I know I know, video game has got to be a video game, right? Game's got a game, but my god. And it's not like I'm facing crazy challenges. It's just this building is immense, and there's got to be some kind of impossible space going on here. Like I, I run into a, a monk, and he's he has lost his, his dang mind. There's just demons filling up this place. There's also corpses just freaking everywhere, uh, which makes me think that Mr. Loras Apprentice is not just helping a Lilith. He's also, maybe he's just a bad dude in general, and this is really setting the stage for that. This is the, the, the priest, the, the head priest. So he tells us what the uh, traitorous apprentice is going to do. He's going to summon one of the lesser evils of hell, which the, 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 the lesser title there is kind of uh, deceitful because apparently it's like one of the most powerful creatures in all of hell. Like there's there's the top greater evils and immediately below that is the lesser evils. And they are some pretty bad dudes. And so we just finished that boss fight, whatever. Are there any health potions I didn't use? One, two, three, four, five, and I think a sixth one behind the subtitles. Even though I said that it feels like my damage is, uh, so is waning just a bit, like pff, this machine gun build is just ravenous on any enemy I come across, especially a singular enemy. So what, I killed him or his spirit. He killed himself. I killed this spirit that spawned in me, this ghostly spirit that spawned immediately afterwards. Yeah, so now we're meeting with meeting up with Lorath again. And so look, we tell him what happened. We tell him we went to the monastery, it was jacked up by his apprentice, and he's summoning a lesser evil. So why why was there an, even an option to come here first? It just it makes no sense. I guess, you know, freedom to the player and all that, but ha giving giving some sense of direction is like not a crime. Don't be, don't be, uh, don't be afraid to hold the player's hand from time to time. And what are we doing here again? I forgot who we're looking for. Oh, we're meeting a hermit. Oh, we're supposed to meet a hermit. Elias. Uh, I've been calling him the Apprentice. He has an actual name. His name is Elias. And the, uh, in the very first, first cutscene of the game, I talked about a dude that had like a piercing in his freaking foreheads. He was like all pale, white skinned Yeah, that, that, that's the traitorous Apprentice. And I'm wondering, did he adopt that look? before this happened because he was a very like a like you know no you're not supposed to judge books by their covers i guess but he was a very very like troubled looking individual in that cutscene, and, and he has always been like that but, like you know not to be judgy on people's appearance but maybe there was a bit of writing on the wall and we find out later that laura had, had an opportunity to actually put an end to Elias's nonsense, and he chose not to. And now look where it got us. Freaking dude can't clean up your own mess, getting drunk with goats, falling asleep in mud puddles, and we clean up, clean up after you. This this gentleman carves magic stuff, and Elias hunted him down to um, employ his services. Yeah, so he manipulates this lonely dude 
to uh, help him make some magic stuff for him. So, or he destroyed a monastery, killed a bunch of priests, and now he's manipulating this uh, hermit that is real big into arts and crafts. And he's trying to get him to assist. Look at this freaking, the imagery here is amazing. It's like the candles, there's blood, there's drawings in the ground. Someone spent several hours making this just for your average Diablo player to not even pay attention to it. Unless, unless they're me and I get to review footage and look more closely. So this is the craft guy I was telling about. He has just gone completely off the rails. He has carved all of these like eulogies of Lilith. And they're all naked, by the way. They're kind of hard to see from a distance. But I, every single one of these statues is basically naked. So dude is obsessed with a uh, demon mother. Yeah, so he is working now with them because he just got easily manipulated into doing Elias's bidding to make um, evil magic runes, I'm guessing. And so he doesn't believe us that we're trying to find Elias with good intentions. And so he just summons... Oh, I, I remember what's going on. So Elias... He was already summoning demons and stuff to do his bidding, and I'm guessing Mr. Um, Mr. Hermit uh, Craftman here has something that can actually um, help facilitate that. So that's why he found him. While he was so easy to manipulate, I don't know. Oh, here's a here's a cool thing that the game has done before. There's two health bars here. The boss is split into two different fights. And so you kill a demon, and then you kill the guy that summoned the demon, or whatever, his facilitator in some capacity. Look at this. Look how many health potions I just don't need. I'm just doing so much damage. These boss fights are over so quickly. It's just, it's meaningless. I feel so powerful right now. I guarantee my uh, rogue class is going to have some type of modification done to it by the developers. And when that happens, I will be very sad, because I am just running through this game no problem look at this guy this this demon is like got some crazy quads going on here and some glutes this this demon does he does not miss leg day and he does his squats so he's given us a brief history lesson on why the lesser evils are so bad and they're literally the embodiment of pure evil like uh, elaboration is not super needed uh, it's appreciated but it's not really needed <laughs> It's not, it's not hard to discern that these are bad dudes. And this, this is a, this is an interesting turn. Like it really felt like we hit a bit of a dead end there about what to do next. But apparently this demon was super special and it needs to, um, eat constantly, I guess. Like physically, it's not, not like some consuming souls. No, it physically needs to consume things constantly. Like it's never satiated. It, it has to consume and eat flesh. So the way to figure out what we do next is to do a bit of an autopsy and literally start ripping the guts out of this demon we just killed to find information about what to do next because apparently the guy we're hunting is holed up in a luxury palace and we find like a medallion of some kind that uh, for some heraldry and i just think it's hilarious that we take this demon to this village to do like this autopsy this is like a hut this is just some dude's like storage shed and when this is over they just everyone just leaves and the demon stays there and i'm wondering if you come back later i haven't tried this yet i think i'll try this next time i play like look i run back inside it's still there <laughs> they didn't get rid of it so like somebody's somebody's storage shed just has a whole dead demon in it and that's just gonna sit there until it gets cleaned up i guess by whoever owns the hut <laughs> I need to do that. I need to come back. I will I will absolutely go back there and see if the demon is still there because if it is, that's just freaking hilarious. Imagine you are just like your mind in your own business and some dude that works for the secret service essentially comes up to you and is like, hey, we need to borrow your shack for a little bit. And you're like, okay, fine. I'm not really using it at the moment. And then you come back at the end of the workday and there's just, there's like a 12 foot tall creature from hell with his guts just strewn all over your floor. <laughs> And I guess they just expect you to clean it up. It's your problem now. <laughs> you offered to help, and this is your punishment. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is this one actually kind of annoyed me a bit. So we come to this town, and uh, Elias, the evil or the traitor, is completely taken over the entire city. If they have conquered a whole city, would that not raise alarm bells for the neighbors? This is a very large establishment, and Elias and some goons that he he employed have taken over the entire thing and are like slaughtering everybody. Like maybe the, the time frame is just like a really small window of things that have transpired. But even if this is like a, a neighboring nation that nobody cares about, like some outside source would want to be, would want to get involved 
a town getting blown up by a whole demon is is one thing but a city being essentially conquered like that's a pretty significant turn of events and now just the three of us we we little three stooges are going to con are going to deal with this ourselves basically like send in a letter asking for backup that's too much the, the lorath he may be a member of the haradrim but he has no uh, authority to request official government aid. So the only course of action is for us to go into this conquered city and solve the problem ourselves. <laughs> I just got done praising this game for make like making the like bringing down the player a peg and making you feel like um, you're just not good enough. And now immediately afterwards, we are infiltrating a conquered city and rescuing a person like single-handedly it seems a little much is all i'm saying but like the idea that we have to rescue a girl that a woman that knows something about a secret passage this town has been taken over by like demon about like, cannibals uh so criminal cannibals a whole army of cannibals apparently and um and a couple and a, a demon here or there a couple demons and there's a single woman who has been taken prisoner and is being held hostage with all of her limbs attached and you know pretty much in good health let me just get right up to that point yeah we, we go through the city we go through the dungeons we go to like the jail cells and look here she is or is she is surrounded by corpses and you're fine how exactly did you survive were you already in prison um because a relatively young female surrounded in a city full of criminals cannibalistic criminals um how exactly are you just being held as a prisoner i i think you would be a pretty prime target and how convenient for us that you are one of a handful of survivors in a whole city of people and you also happen to know about secret passages into the main palace it's it's not unrealistic but it is just grossly convenient that's the term i'll use so we we, we fight our way in we fight our way out single-handedly then we reunite her with i'm guess i don't know are these are these like sisters i forgot are they are they just really good neighbors i forgot what the relationship is look oh oh yum here the girl we just rescued is like appreciating her female companion about like waiting for her putting her lives in danger she was sitting here on this like cliffside watching us put ourselves in danger she she told us roughly where to go to rescue you but then she was like okay have fun and then now that we have we went through this army of cannibals and demons through a city into a dungeon out of sewer filled with even more demons and nonsense and she's getting my credit are you kidding uh, can i at least get a pat on the back is that too much to ask this this part is just like icing on on the top she tells us about secret entrance that is literally eight feet like to our left so they, they run away thank you for your little information yeah look 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 okay so let's let's watch now i'm i'm up here on this map and i'm, I'm going down go around the corner hang hang a right hang your first right after you go down the ramp and then boom here we are secret friggin tunnel it was like we we could have found this by accident <laughs> I didn't have to infiltrate this whole freaking city to race to rescue this ungrateful chick. I could have just wandered around, like I could have like wandered off to go use the restroom and like found this freaking place. Or maybe Lorath and one of his drunken supers would have stumbled across it on accident. Like, you, uh, there's no demons or cannibals here, but uh, you know, if you thought you were getting off easy because this is a secret entrance, no, the game's like, pow, spiders. At least, I will admit, at least it does get to the point relatively quickly. Like, we sneak in through some back door, and then we're immediately in the palace. So that's nice. Not wasting any time there. And where where was the... the there's like a cutscene here. Where did, where did it go? Oh, come on. Why are you mad? Ah, okay. So before we sneak into the palace, we stumble across the big guy. So there, these are minions of Lilith, and he is the leader of the cannibals that have taken over the city. And this this put just puts a smile on my face. So the, you can tell that their their alliance is kind of uh, kind of not the strongest. <laughs> As just one the slightest hint of annoyance, the dude gets absolutely smacked and just folds. Like that was one heck of a hit, and the dude is immense. So it would make it would make sense, and this translates 
to um, the actual fight because spoilers that big guy that big bad broody dude is somebody we will be um, engaging in fisticuffs with and if uh, if this is my recent memory is doing me any justice that fight was rough ah okay so we run into a servant of Lilith and look at Lorath man he's just going in stabbing with his little pointy stick get the work getting that work in oh yeah I died hard here what, what went wrong what, what did i do wrong here uh, i'm standing in uh damage nonsense that ability absolutely decimated me let's let's get an instant replay on that it just goes to show a bit of the damage scaling here this this enemy has the first ability is to spawn in um, little explosions and then there's bigger explosions look how almost nondescript this damage circle is if you're just focusing on where you're clicking and maybe looking at your ability bar this little red circle it doesn't get look it actually fades when the damage is about to happen it doesn't get brighter it doesn't flash it fades away when the damage is about to happen it's really easy to uh, overlook if you're me anyways and then as soon as it fades away just a bit boom she teleported hit me and my health is all gone look you can't even you can't even see a sliver i'm less than one percent health and then the very next like low damage ability is just a, i kind of walked into it too i'm a freaking idiot just goes to show you that if you don't pay attention the game will put you in your place take out take out judgment what happens next uh okay we find the royal uh, so this is the royal courtroom all of this stuff on the ground that's not demons that's not our blood that is the leadership of this town of the city excuse me yeah they are they have seen better days that is their, their lineage as safe to say is is cut is cut short just a bit an archive of the forbidden handpicked by elias himself apparently he's been here for a bit we, he takes over this entire city and he holds up in this room and he's doing research like how long has he been here how, how long have we been fooling around because it seems like it was weeks at the very least uh, from from the story beat but as far as gameplay goes like maybe a couple days from what appears in the story it seems like it must have been very long time weeks and or months which um if we've been losing this fight for that long against lilith ugh, it doesn't feel like we're on the we're on the winning side of this fight if uh, elias the uh, traitor can just hang out in a conquered city City for an extended period of time just to do personal like recreational research on demon summoning Elias is hiding out in a temp like some de uh, evil place and the only way to actually access that evil place is to get blessed by one of the prime evils so he is summoning a lesser evil in a not not fun place and he have to in order to enter the place you have to be blessed by the top top guys which is super um, interesting for us because like we gotta follow the rules we the heroes in the story have to go to these shrines and get blessed by the enemy essentially these shrines just exist out in the open anybody can go to uh, uh, like lorath knows exactly where they are you would think that doing something about these very very bad evil shrines might be on your list uh, uh your to-do list and then we get to the final shrine mephisto and and a portal opens up which is kind of weird what what could this be oh a bloodied wolf we saw this guy earlier he apparently saved us in the forest um, at the very beginning of the game and we put two and two together that this is one of the prime evils this is a, a, of, of all the baddies of baddies he's one of the top three the mortal seeks to use the power of the primes for his own ambitions nobody knows their place anymore this is hilarious mephisto the one of the big baddies thinks that elias could potentially become pretty damn annoying even more so than like lilith the actual bad the actual bad guy we're supposed to be dealing with his solution to deal with this problem is to actually help us but he puts us through this little trial first with barbarians these barbarians have very strong lore significance that i am just not familiar with i'm just i'm too smooth brain to wrap my head around it i'm sure there are very good put together lore videos out there that are better stripped than mine that will explain to you what why mephisto wants you to go and beat up a bunch of barbarians in this alternate dimension this this is hilarious one of the previous diablo games i think it was diablo 2 i think you actually fight all three prime evils like this guy this is a this is like one of the bosses you had to deal with in that game and now <laughs> my my character's like i wouldn't expect one of the prime evils to 
even concern himself with me. And Mephisto's like, well, hey, look, I've had a, I've had a bad patch. I've been trapped in magic stones. I've been cast back into hell. I don't have all of my power at the moment. I'm trying to gather myself still. And he's like, we all have our ups and downs, don't we? <laughs> Dude, you are an immortal being older than like the war the world I'm currently standing on and like you're telling you're trying to relate with me about having having bad days dude like M Mr. Mephisto here one of the three biggest demons in all of hell is talking like how he just doesn't like Mondays <laughs> it's 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 surprisingly relatable <laughs> When you get blessed by a greater demon, apparently it just really freaking hurts. According to our character, getting blessed does not feel good by a demon, which I guess makes pretty much makes pretty pretty big sense thematically. Oh, the Elias is in the temple of the Prime. Oh, okay, yeah. So so that's why we need the blessings of the Primes, because they have their own temple for the Prime Evils, and so we need to get their blessing to actually enter the temple. Very very strong security. Uh, Security measures, by all accounts, from what I can tell. Especially if it really freaking hurts to get that blessing. The lead-up to this prime temple is pretty, uh... <laughs> it's pretty theatrical. Like, it's literally an evil demon-worshipping place in a volcano. You don't get more, um... You don't get more, like, hellish symbolism than a cursed temple in a literal volcano. This temple, oh, thank god, was a lot smaller than the monastery. And guess who is here? Oh, you can't really see him. But Mr. Big Barbarian uh, Cannibal Dude, he he's just chilling in this temple. He's literally, he's drinking like blood from a skull, I think. Really on, on brand. This is a really insane ritual. They have this chick, I don't know who she is. I don't remember anyways. Hey Baldy, nice to see you again. This ritual involves her sacrifice in some capacity by tattooing her entire body. Ugh, that looks nuts. And they're about to oh, yawning. This is not a boring cutscene, I'm just tired. So he, he runs from the shadows, Mr. Lorath, and I love this. Without hesitation, Lor our, our Lorath Haradrin here stabs dude in the chest immediately. His first course of action. It doesn't matter. Dude disappears almost instantly. But uh, yeah, the ritual's over. And now this chick, <laughs> she just got tattooed from head to foot and then drenched in blood. She is not having a good day right now. And uh, of course, this guy, he's just, he, he's just doing his own thing. Now, here's the fight I mentioned. Gave me a run for all of my freaking money. Goodness. So this guy has five freaking phases. He does crazy damage, and each one of his phases, he summons freaking dudes. Oh, and a stun? He stuns you? That's just so rude. All these other bosses, I've talked about how I've healed uh, very little and had an abundance of potions, but something about this guy. Um, maybe it's because he's one level higher than me. Like, I'm level 30, he's level 31. I don't actually know if that, like, how much that matters, but I am getting absolutely just clowned on he keeps stunning me he keeps hitting me for like half my health with like a single strike and he is very mobile like he, he doesn't have any ranged abilities um but he moves pretty dang quick and that charge is it leads into a stun leads into swipes like dude will just ev make like thanos snap my freaking health bar I get cornered here and I think I die. So I'm in a corner. I have healing potions. I don't know why I'm not using them right now. I use my ultimate ability. I'm trying to thin out the dudes. He freaking stuns me because of course. And then he turns around and just smacks me in the back of the head. <laughs> I love here that says, um, it tells you whenever you freaking get owned. Like the entire server knows that you freaking died. Very, very nice. Very much appreciated. Put my, put my defeat on blast. Uh, we're we're kind of we're kind of whittling each other down. He's at less than half health. I am at significantly less uh, potions. Uh, I just went from one to, to three. I just picked up two more. But um, there, there's, a, there's a, a little bit of this fight to go, and I am running out of ways to stay alive. I am on low health. I have one more potion. I'm healing from my second to last one. And he's at low health. I'm at low health. He just did that ability. That was a mistake. That bounce back was a mistake on my part. I'm stunned. I used my last potion. I'm gaining health. Nope, the potion's done. So we are both like pretty equivocal on current health status, and it comes down to the freaking wire. There we go. 
Those guys would have spawned in, they would have leafed at me, they would have killed me, probably, and I would have to fight this guy again for a third time, but nope. Look how physically large dude is compared to his other guys. Like, this guy must be, like, 10 feet tall and 400 pounds. Man's is enormous. Oh, I gotta stop kicking my freaking uh, computer. So, by the looks of things, we are uh, almost at an end here. Let me see, are there any more significant story beats I need to touch on? Oh yeah, so we meet a mysterious woman. Uh, okay, what was it? A and Dariel. So she was in the summoning ritual for one of the lesser evils, and since she was like 90, like 90 percent of the way there, Thaisa, that's her name. Since she was like 90 percent of the way of the ritual, apparently some kind of connection was established. So I'm guessing she will be significant in the uh, coming story. It was a very good point. She doesn't trust Mr. Lorath here because he's a horrodrin, but so was the guy that was just doing a demon ritual on her and giving her crazy tattoos. So a, a very good awareness that she would not be immediately trusting to him just because he claims to be horrodrin because one of those guys was just about to sacrifice her. But it looks like we are coming to an end. Anything more happens here? Nope, I just have to continue, play the game a little bit more. And, and find out where Elias wandered off to, what is up with the chick that has tattoos all over her. Uh, yeah, maybe do some demon killing and definitely probably do a lot more walking around. One last time, I am definitely not a hedgehog. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and until the next one, this is not goodbye for good, just goodbye for now. Stick around for episode number three. Interior Crocodile Alligator on Drive a Mobile Movie Theater. You know, one person asked me in a comment once, uh, do you edit your videos with your hat on? And the answer is... Maybe.